Hello there and welcome back to the Agostino Zynga show with me your host Agostino Zynga and this is episode number 502. That's 502 of the Agostino Zynga show me just a little bit with I your host Agostino Zynga. I hope you're doing well wherever this may find you on this fine fine Monday morning wherever this may be meet you at maybe you're listening to it on a tuesday but hopefully listening to it on a monday when it's fresh out i hope you are well wherever you may be if it's your first time watching the show via youtube you know what to do smash the like hit subscribe leave me a comment down below if you're listening via the numerous podcast apps out there then please give me a like please give me a share in whatever way that you can and of course if you listen to this via the apple podcast a five four three two one star review would be greatly appreciated just so i can get a little bump on the algorithm and everyone can know what time it is with the kid in it right just do that help the kid out that'd be greatly appreciated of course and again support via patreon as well at patreon.com for just agostino for all the bonus content you want get on there only subscribe for little as one dollar the equivalent of one pound per month and you get access to all my bonus content so don't delay get involved on there today anyway how's it going going pretty well for me um just recovered from a pretty hectic weekend um been fine the last couple of days but you know how it is isn't it sometimes fridays <laughs> bleed into saturdays and sometimes thursdays bleed into tuesdays but we're here we're still standing and we're still doing the damn thing luckily this was also the start of october which usually spells the start of sober october for me so i'm very much looking forward to limiting and somewhat decreasing my amount of booze that i'm drinking and just generally going out and stuff and getting myself back into a kind of more of a lined way of living so that should be fairly good but this weekend has been pretty crap because man united drew against emerson isn't it? i'm not going to talk about that right now i'm going to start off with some other bits and pieces but it's always interesting how badly a football result for a team that I have no influence on affecting their results can affect my weekend. Um, I always say to myself that I'm over it, that I can pull myself away, that I know that the problems that Man United lay far, you know, uh, lay at the feet of the people who are actually at the top, who actually own the club, less so on Oli's feet directly. You know, he has some of the blame, obviously, for being a pretty average coach, but we can't lay it all at his feet. I think we've had many, pre we've had many managers pr prior to him, a couple of really good ones, who still didn't succeed, even though they were given money. Maybe not all the money they wanted, but they were given some. They had the right CV, they had the right credentials, and they still couldn't make it work at United. So it's very... Um, naive and probably a little bit too demanding to expect a manager who we all think is pretty crap to somehow be able to turn it around and be able to win us a trophy or get us a tra challenge for the league it's just not going to happen but yeah like I said I'll speak about that another time but that definitely did ruin my weekend for a set period of time but hey shalom we keep it moving um but what else we want to talk about yeah many things to get into actually many things to divulge in many interesting and somewhat you know surface level topics to get involved in it seems like i don't know maybe because the end of the year but people have stopped the madness is it me i've noticed there's less kind of crazy shit to kind of report on and talk about um in this kind of cultural commentary world that i kind of exist in it feels like um there's a bit of a slow news uh, slow not snow a slow news day in general um people seem to be a bit on their best behavior maybe they've sobered up maybe they've just quit maybe they're over it i don't know but there's definitely a lack of flagrancy out there in the digital space there's definitely a lack of kind of real self-destructive behavior that you can kind of report on um everyone seems to have kind of got their knocks got their little clips around the ears and probably kept themselves under a duvet until it's safe to come back outside i would assume i would assume but anyway, jump back show to get involved in today. So make sure you get yourself a drink and a snack and all that good stuff. And we're going to just dive on deep straight away. So number one, as I mentioned previously, um, Sober October starts this month. So for all my Sober October soldiers out there, if you are embarking on this journey of um, restricting your alcohol usage to zero and your drugs to zero and whatever vice that you do to zero, then I definitely commend you because usually October is a crazy month to do so. There's usually a lot of kind of birthday parties in your office. Well, it depends if you're in the office or if you're still at work or not or if you're working from home. But usually I always find there's loads of weird social gatherings that happen around now loads of great parties are happening around now Burkheim just opened bloody hell at the beginning of October so it's usually a hard time to kind of decide to do a, this sort of thing but I'm a big believer in general again because I live life on the you know on the edge um especially with my occupation outside of my nine to five where I DJ and stuff you know in, in kind of local bars and pubs it does somehow 
it does have a tendency to sometimes push you into self-destructive behaviors and to stuff that you don't necessarily want to do on a weekly basis so i've always found having the reset button or having like a bit of a pause where you don't do as much for a one period for a period of the year can sometimes snowball into you doing it more frequently now it doesn't always happen but it can happen so you just because you do so october for instance this is a good year to do it good and a bad year be good and a, yeah good and a bad year to do it because it's a bad year because everyone's been locked indoors so naturally people are going to go nuts this time around and you'd imagine with, with um, Halloween coming up and New Year's Eve and all that stuff and Christmas celebrations people might go a little bit too crazy now the other side of it could be because people have spent so much time indoors drinking and just getting fucked right remember the first few months of covid everyone's i don't know if you where you live but because you know i live in a block of flats um an apartment basically and every and every time i'd go to the bin to truck stuff away and shit there'd be skips full of flipping glass bottles you know i mean people were getting smashed now it was maybe it's because they were just feeling a little bit down or because they had the opportunity to day drink and stuff because you're at home and no one can see if you're drinking but there was a lot of alcohol consumption in those first few months of covid again maybe it's a coping mechanism but still that was very concerning and um i think maybe because of that people have maybe just worn themselves out because i said i mentioned in the podcast a few episodes ago that i've definitely seen a decrease in the amount of people outside um not obviously in places like shoreditch i went out for like a little staff drinks the other day and it was a bit of a mind trip to be in a place like shoreditch right because um nothing has basically changed it was raining i think it was midweek and people were still out in droves getting lunch i'm sorry getting dinner going to an, a, maybe a cocktail bar after um you saw groups of boys outside of cash points at really inspicuous times of the night knowing you know there's probably no good decisions being made out the back of doing a little cash point drop or a cash point withdrawal at like 1 a.m or whenever it was i got the train back home but generally the vibe there is completely different to the rest of london really for the most part where i've been out most people haven't been doing it haven't been going out and getting on it or whatever so maybe this is the best year as well because people are going to tie themselves out so you can get back on to kind of being living a somewhat sober life at least for the month of october um me personally challenge wise again mostly just drugs and alcohol that's it for me um there might there might be some other things i might add on down the line like the exercise stuff which i've been fairly good at to be fair i've been going to gym at least three times a week running at least once so that's four times four days out of the week that i'm already doing something i might want to up that and make it just crazy where i'm just doing two two a days no two two a days for yeah two two a days for per week and then maybe other gym sessions in between i might do that sometimes later on and then i might kind of do the book thing again i was speaking to somebody the other day on instagram they were asking about how how i read so many books and stuff and i haven't really picked up a book in recent years i think no in recent months since january but before that i was reading at least you know maybe between four to five books per month that i was just getting through and you know remembering stuff and using the stuff and putting into action because that's the main thing is all when you're reading a lot of these novels and um you know reading these fiction non-fiction books some of the messaging and maybe some of the um language used the words used insights motifs plots ideas themes i really like to kind of incorporate it into my day-to-day -day and maybe use it as a way to kind of frame the way i think about things and use it as a kind of weird operating system that you can kind of apply other things to it can be a little bit of a conversation killer when you go to a house party though so you know what i mean don't invite me around when i've just done my amazon book shopping run because i might start talking about some shit that no one wants to talk about at 2 a.m high off the balls on cat and stuff but we move we move but um yeah man if you're gonna do sober october and you're jumping involved when i say yeah man i always hear um tim dylan's voice when he does the impression of joe rogan yeah man <laughs> so good like so i think impressions are like that right either you do an impression really bang on where you actually sound like the person like that guy that does the football impressions of all the football coaches and managers and whatnot or you do them so badly that people recognize what you're trying to do because it sounds so terrible and so exaggerated people just can't help but laughing and i think that's what tim dylan's impression of joe rogan has done so yeah um so october starts of course so if you are getting involved smash the like button um leave me a comment down below and let me know what you are 
crossing off your list. We're not doing it Burt Kreischer style. We're not counting the old days that we did not drink. We're, we're doing it properly. First to the 31st, no mucking around. So make sure you leave your comment down below. And if you cheat, just let it be known. Put your hands up and say so. But none of this like kind of, oh yeah, I did this, I did that. No, 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 no. None of that like, forgazy stuff. Either you do it properly or you don't. And if you don't, no problem. But at least you've got some days in. That's the most important thing about it, just to get some days in, especially if you can get like a full week. If you can do a Monday to Sunday, especially if you're struggling with that stuff and you're usually a person that comes back home and has to kind of give yourself a little um, JD on the rocks or whatnot, then you're definitely going to see the advantages of it. I know when I did it, when I've done it plenty of times before, I've done it this, I've done it October, I've done it January. Like I said before, no, I've not said it before on here, I don't think, but when I was working for a previous company, I went to uh, Berlin Fashion Week during a time and, you know, I got invited to all the cool parties because I was there with somebody that was very well known. I got taken to all the best places. I got taken to some Adidas party where Kano was performing of all people in the middle of Berlin they were giving out free trainers and shit I was too late for that of course but there was a free bar like when I mean free bar I mean free bar like when, when they like there's no such thing as a because in the UK we tend to have those weird things where there's like a limit behind the bar so it's free up to a certain point then you have to pay and then you have the they whip out the flipping uh, POS machines but this one was just like free free and if I remember correctly there was um, cocktails at the bar all free with the exception of maybe two and then when you just turn around, if you're like, oh, I'm broke, I don't want to spend any money. If you just turn around, literally there was a wall to wall, like fridge. I don't know how they installed that shit in, but literally wall to wall um, fridge of like Heineken that you could just like basically open the fridge and just get whatever you wanted. And they kept replenishing this shit. Absolutely madness. So I was able to do that and be fine. I went to the Bergheim completely sober, which, you know, I don't advise people to do. Don't get me wrong, but I did it. Um, went to Cocktail de, Cocktail de More. They are more sorry, the very famous um queer um what you call it club night in Greece Mula that's not around anymore. Um I went to Club Division there like that. Like I've I've done the thing. I mean I've done the thing. So there's no real confusion in my head about, you know, whether or not I can enjoy myself in those scenarios without having a drink or anything else. But in general, I think I spoke to about somebody else before. It is probably more favorable if you're going to go out to those kind of events to be somewhat intoxicated or under the influence. It just isn't as fun usually, I find. Of course, it can be if you go into it. Like when I went to Fabric that time to see Jeff Mills and to see that image in like, what's it called? Wigs, right? Yeah, that was sick, right? And I went in there mostly because it was a, um, what you call it? I got brought in, right? Someone put me in the guest list. So I was super grateful to go. And I also wanted to see a show, right? I didn't go in the Pacific to go and get my head completely mashed off in it. I wanted to go and see a sick rave and I did. I left my house at 2 a.m., arrived there, skanked out, saw a guy nearly collapse and just went home in it, right? So all well and good. But I think if you go out with this whole intention of trying to get like, you know, jiggy with it, maybe you might suffer in that regard. So maybe it might be beneficial just to kind of, you know, put that side to the, the, the put that thing to to one side just for the period of October, October and obviously pick it up later on. I don't know. Maybe maybe that's you. Maybe that's not you. Do as you please. Um, but yeah, let me know if you're getting involved in it. Of course, there's charities involved in it, too. Um, there's Macmillan Trust that are doing so in October mainly for booze feel amazing and support people living cancer so obviously you can do that kind of thing but again mine's less of a charity thing and more so just of a personal kind of self inventory and just reset button just to make sure that I'm kind of you know keeping myself in somewhat um good nick right because if you're enforcing yourself to go in sober october once per year and you're doing the dry january kind of thing that everyone usually does because they feel guilty about how much they ate and drank during the christmas holidays then it's pretty decent in terms of making sure you're reducing your dependency and stuff and making sure you have some sort of balance now it would help if as a culture britain and just in general parts of europe had a better relationship not parts of europe let's say england let's not say europe europe is better we just you know we just have such a terrible relationship when it comes to alcohol and drugs and stuff we just don't have any and i can speak from personal experience we don't really have any what's that word called um we don't have a kind of we don't have a self-regulatory system we don't can't really like we don't have to measure ourselves to balance it we don't really have a good balance thing that's the issue um maybe it's societal as well because like i said when i when i'm into other countries in europe because places are open later there isn't really a need to go and go so hard whereas here think about a small town in the uk right most pubs close nine ten maybe earlier most nightclubs quote unquote when i went to what was it hastings right that's like a smallish kind of town i think the 
club that I went to that was open the latest, I'm going to say was open until 2 or 4 a.m. And then the pubs were basically doing last orders just before 11. So what people would do, so imagine if you're out already having dinner, you'd go to those pubs to have some grub, get some alcohol down you because it's obviously cheaper in there and then go to the nightclub after because you know it's going to be more expensive or a strip club, whatever you're going to go to. And then of course you get chucked out there by 2, 3 a.m. but you're still steaming. You still need to let off so quote unquote some steam, right? Like it just doesn't kind of correspond for a good productive night out. It's just going to lead to destructive behavior um, personally or to other people. So that might be part of the reason or just generally temperament wise, we just, you know, it just is what it is. It's just what we do here. We get black out and then we just keep it moving until life hits us in the face and tells us not to do it again. Or we just kind of, you know, ignore the problem and hope it goes away. You know, who knows? But yeah, so October 2021, it's going to be an interesting one again, like I said. But let's see what we do with that one. Which brings me neatly on to this little video of um, Chris Brown interacting with Lizzo at some event somewhere backstage. And I've seen a couple of videos of Chris Brown like this before. I think I've seen him with LeBron James. Is it LeBron? Yeah, I think it was maybe LeBron. It's at some sort of outdoor space and they kind of cross paths with each other. And it looks like LeBron's talking to him and, you know, Chris is doing the same like kind of twitchy crackhead dance that he's doing here in this video. And again, you know, calling him a crackhead is obviously is a bit mean, but we all know that he likes to, 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 to get on the slopes, as they say, right? There's many videos of him that we've seen so far, allegedly, um, you know, doing a couple of old cheeky bumps in the club and whatnot, which is cool. Do what you want in it. And I think for the most part, musicians or most part fans who kind of are reluctant to believe that their favorite you know rock star r&b artist which he definitely is a heartthrob a kid a guy that's essentially been the the you know the obsession of young girls all around the world from the time he was a young young boy himself right um is not unlikely to see that somebody in his position going through the things that he's gone through especially with whole rihanna stuff that he would be in the state that he's in now it's more admirable when they don't turn out like this it's more admirable when they're just like clean cut still the same pure soul that they were when they first got into the industry but the industry corrupts you you have many pressures around you um you've got loads of money you get loads of attention you know attractive mixed race guy is always going to get attention anyway but then add to the fact that he can sing and he can dance his face off it's just you know it's just it's a cheat code right uh, then he gets jumped into a gang celebrity gangs allegedly again i don't know if that's true but allegedly he's he, you know he's got some real ties in that respect don't get me wrong you know like it's not surprised that he's going to be in a situation where this could be the case but it is a little bit sad to see him like this in that regard because again like i said i think he's still one of our greatest um you know male line reacts especially when it comes to consistency especially when it comes to catalog like he's got albums that's when i knew there was an issue when he dropped when he was dropping albums with like 40 songs i was like okay i know a session when i see it i know somebody has gotten on it send a couple of too many texts to people to do sound engineering and go to the studio they've arrived now and now you have to follow through and then now here we are with the 40 40 plus track album that he gets annoyed when people don't listen to the whole thing it's like <laughs> you know listen you're singing for two and a half hours i mean i've got work to go to here i've got to look after my kids i can't hear you, hear you flipping crying about karuchi and subtweeting her in your raps and stuff i can't do it but this is this is yeah this is interaction with chris brown and lizzo backstage somewhere and let's just say he looks uh worse for wear allow the girls as well a period for what everything is a period isn't it like i guess figuratively it makes sense but jesus look at it look 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 boom boom twitch twitch but i don't know if he's doing that thing where like you know when you're twi when you're on your on it and you get twitchy and you've got the kind of the clams and you don't want to get near you and touch you because you don't want them to you don't want them to know right but it's quite clear isn't it because i think that's the weird thing as well i think it's a hip-hop thing or it's a black thing for whatever reason doing you know smoking weed drinking lean even is more acceptable or popping percocets is more acceptable than being open that you might like to do heroin being open that you might like to do coke being open that you might like to do crack all these sort of things that clearly some of these people are doing 
because we all can't believe we all don't believe that famous dex is just high off weed and pills we all know that it's more than that it's a cocktail of stuff and when people like unfortunately r.i.p the great michael k williams passes away and you know it transpires that he was doing heroin recreationally everyone's like, oh my god you know what i mean but it's like what do you what do you think these people are doing in their spare time when they don't have things where they don't have stuff to occupy their time um when you have a family it's, it's just difficult do you know what i mean i i definitely sympathize with all that too much time too much access too much money um too many labelers all those things play into it but again it's just a. I also feel there's a lack of kind of upfrontness about what's actually occurring behind closed doors which again leads to the position that we're in now but again can't blame it on that because it's still chris brown's a big boy he needs to kind of figure out a way to kind of make this better for himself but you'd hate to get to the point and again god forbid anything bad happened to him but I'm really going to look at you weirdly if you're a celebrity out there and you suddenly come out. With, again, it's not your business to come out and say, I know. But if something terrible happens to him and you, everyone's coming, oh, I wish I could have helped. To do this. You could have helped by saying something. You could have helped by even saying something to him privately, but you didn't. Because you want to be in his good graces and make sure you get tickets to go to whatever event or you get his tickets to go to his house parties, which I know to be legendary and all that stuff. You just kind of keep your things yourself and let the person be self-destructive when really just reaching out and even just saying something just so you acknowledge it is a good thing i know for addicts usually it's not the best thing from what i read when you go out and kind of approach them that way i think i've read something similar to like approaching an addict before they're ready to change and telling them maybe they need to fix up their life is similar to like lending a friend some money um they will end up despising you right like later on because they were put in a position where they have to ask their friend for money so it's actually not so they, they always say if you end if you end money to your friend like an actual friend also accept the fact that that person probably isn't going to be a friend anymore just because the dynamic has changed all of a sudden right Maybe more so in their head than yours because you're willing to give it but they can they're always going to seem subservient and always going to feel a way that they you had to kind of help them out and sort of pull them out from that dark hole they were in but seeing chris brown like this i don't know man it's just not the funnest thing <laughs> that's all that twitching right? let's, let's take off the sound but yeah it's all that twitching if you're not watching this he's in a white t-shirt and there's a couple of girls or well, lizzo and another girl lizzo hugging him by the way so he's kind of pivoting away with his crotch and stuff he's doing it just to like not be me too then he kind of bows down a little bit and keeps backing away but he just looks a little bit twitching and whatever it may be now this also could be because this is how he is he might have adhd right because a lot of people don't this is the thing with people i think they say a lot with um who is it kim kardashian i think um a couple of people that i know who work retail in like suffrages and harvey nichols and stuff whenever they've seen it in public like jesus you don't believe how actual how small she actually is until you see her in real life she's tiny allegedly right because i guess in instagram the the proportions are off right in general on social media people that you think are taller aren't really tall people are short are a bit tall i don't know just a bit off so for whatever reason again I, I don't think she's six foot tall but for whatever reason i don't you have in your head that she might be i don't know five ten five eight but supposedly she's even shorter than that she's like under five six or five five or something so when you see them in real life like that it's probably you're also going to notice other things about them that you don't really notice before like i remember one time again bad example but i saw a video of jt from the city girls walking i was like Ugh, you know what i mean because she doesn't walk that great in heels but because you just see how attractive she looks in a 2d image you've never actually seen her walk you don't really you know what i mean it's again it's no one's business all this monarchy but i'm pretty sure maybe this is one of those instances as well again i'm I, maybe i'm projecting and i'm just kind of wanting to give my guy chris um christopher brown um some rope here or you know give him the benefit of the doubt but it also could be that it also could be that he's always been like this like he's always been a bit twitchy adhd which is why he's a great performer and maybe he's been amplified with the with the drug use but uh i don't know man it's just sad to see in it but yeah hopefully he's okay hopefully he has the right friends around him that can help him and i guess like i said before with the john jones thing until you're ready to make a change in those kind of things it's legitimately a waste of time for anyone to talk to you it does absolutely nothing i i, I think it's similar to when like you're overweight and people say you should work out and do this it's like i'm not gonna do that until i decide it's important enough for me to change my life and the things that i do in order to do that i will if not they're just not going to do it. So it can sometimes be a bit of a mute and waste of time, a waste of a time to kind of, you know, a waste of waste of time and waste of breath to try and get people to come around to those kind of things. 
Next on the list, news courtesy of Hip Hop DX talking about waste of times and maybe things that don't make quite much sense. And also talking about um, my issue in general with um, rich and wealthy people nowadays, especially people who have amassed a huge amount of wealth in their adult age, right? People that didn't kind of come from money, um, who basically were able to kind of, you know, cash out from the ages of like 30 to 50 years old, regardless if you're in entertainment, podcasting, whatever. I think there's a real lack, especially when it comes to men, there's a real lack of like, fuck you energy, right? And that's that's that film, right? I forgot what movie it's from, where the reference is, but essentially the idea of having fuck you money is that so you can get the, so you basically get the right to say fuck you to things right and that could be situations that could be opportunities that could be to people institutions because most men with a spine or most men with that kind of know themselves and want to you know take care of their family and their friends they don't ever want to be subservient right you want to get to a point where you're somewhat self-sufficient um um, where you somehow have the ability to kind of be able to pay your own way where you're able it, even if it's, it's again it doesn't need to be a lot of money it just needs to be more so freedom from needing permission it kind of goes back to that story that's featured in i think the four hour work week or one of those books right where i think the story around it was basically because before i work here, again it gets a lot of bad stick but i think it's mostly because of the name of the book the title it kind of makes you think that you know Tim Ferriss is a bit of a grifter, which he isn't, I think. I think he's really good at that kind of total human op optimization thing that he popularized and, um, op yeah, basically, yeah, human performance and, you know, making sure people are, are trying to get to the heart of why successful people are successful. Like, it's some really good stuff in there. There's a story in the 4-Hour Workweek where essentially there's this um really, ex you know, um, well-off guy who goes to some sort of island somewhere, finds a fisherman who's selling either barbecue fish or something um and it's really tasty everyone loves it but he only sells a certain amount for a certain set of time during the day and only on certain days and the guy just can't believe why he's turning down money right leaving money on the table why don't you do this why don't you do that if you do this you do that you can maximize your profits you could do this you could do this you could do that and then every time he keeps asking he keeps suggesting these things to him the fisherman's like yeah but what would that allow, what would that allow me to do right if i did if i was to do this if i was to get business cards do a flyer start a facebook page increase my hours get employees maybe open up my distributing whatever my distribution sorry maybe franchise some things from other islands what would that eventually get to what would that eventually lead for me what would be the kind of um advantage of doing such a thing and i think at the end the businessman's like oh when you do all that stuff that will mean that so you have the ability to basically do what you want with your free time, you know, spend time with your kids, spend time with your wife, hang out, do hobbies that you actually really enjoy. And he's like, that's what I'm already doing. Yeah. That's why I don't work five days a week. That's why I only work two days a week. That's why I don't do eight hour shifts. I do only the peak or whatever. Right. He designed a lifestyle in a way that allows him to basically be able to maximize his time with his family while also being able to put food on the table with his job but it's also not killing him to a point where he can't you know see his kids grow up which is what you're meant to be doing but again that's a that's a kind of version of fuck your fuck your money it's not fuck your money and like you can't say no to everybody but it still allows you the flexibility to not be able to clock in and shit and there's not enough good dudes that do that everyone's just too safe too timid um too quiet they don't want to ruffle any feathers which i understand because you know I'm sure if you're very successful, having some, you know, no, no, no mark, some no face um, avatar based flipping Twitter accounts attacking you for everything that you do can be a little bit cumbersome after a while. But one example of somebody having a few money and deciding to just go out there and say the most wildest shit is Akon, right? A guy that's supposedly worth somewhere in the region of like $80 million, if you believe the Googles, has effectively decided to die on the R. Kelly Hill, which is wild to say the least absolutely wild um not something i would actually do and not something i'd advocate if you're trying to have fucking money and make a statement i think there are probably better things you could be spending your time advocating for or trying to have a hot take on but again i appreciate that he exists i also appreciate the fact that he's willing to say these things because he knows he's uncancelable right he's the one that did the what feature with eight with six nine when he first got locked up after everyone was saying that he was forbidden you know um what's that was called uh, a rat and stuff right um akon did a song of him even though he's got that seminal kind of prison hit and locked up they won't let me out shit he still did it with him because again f you money you can do what you want so this is courtesy of hip-hop dx it says akon believes r kelly has a right to redeem himself over quote-unquote mistakes 
This feels similar to like, you know, when um Dave Chappelle said um Ja Rule, isn't it, right? Ja Rule. Let, let's get I can't wait to hear what Ja Rule has to say about things this thing, right? Which is kind of a commentary on the um over dependence and people willing people kind of caring about what celebrities that have, you know, questionable levels of intelligence are gonna say about very nuanced topics. And just celebrities in general. Not even hope about people. So it continues. Akon might have wanted to avoid catching up with TMZ for the foreseeable future. On the heels of a controversial comment about rich people having it worse than poor folks. Oh, did you say that? Madness. The lonely artist R. Kelly should have um, shot at redemption following his conviction on numerous sexual abuse charges on Monday. There is always a way to redeem yourself, Akon says, but you have to first accept the fact that you're wrong. He has the right to redeem himself for those mistakes. Um, even him, he has a right to try and make it by to try and make it right by those he hurt. Now, if Akon's Christian or religious in any kind of way, this makes complete sense. I think it's interesting to see people kind of doing away with this sort of idea and premise or because there's a lot of I understand it because I think there's some people especially religious Christian people who are so quick to kind of come out and be the first person to say yes I forgive my um my kind of son's murderer who went through his house ransacked his home raped his wife hung his kids by the flipping coal hanger and then killed my husband 17 times over right there's there's a too much of a reluctance to come out there's too much of an insistence to come out and say that kind of thing maybe to get airtime or to prove that you're the best Christian and top like a top Christian instead of like to a top red which can be annoying but in general if you're a religious person it this shouldn't be that far off for you to have this sort of opinion the most reprehensible people in the world who do the worst things are always going to be redeemable to you because whatever but the god you pray to promises everybody redemption right so for you not to have it and somebody that's quote-unquote perfect to have it who's all seeing to have it just doesn't make any sense does it now if he's not religious and he says this kind of thing that's when it gets a bit loopy you know what i mean if he comes out and says he's atheist and he still has this kind of thinking that's when you're like rah that's probably, I wouldn't say more impressive, but it's just interesting someone to have that if they don't have any sort of religious anchor to them. But hey, what can I know? It continues, says, Akon says, I believe that God makes no mistakes. See, there you go. People that can debate back and forth all day, and if it's happening to him, it's supposed to happen to him for whatever reason. Now, that's something that he has to have within himself to really value his whole life. His way of being and being get caught up in a situation like that, whatever happens, is between him and God, which is true. I don't see there's anything wrong you said there really in that respect but I just think nowadays with how kind of tense everything is and I think that it's more so around the fact that this is, this is going to sound weird but it's more so around the fact that look at that crazy headline there Lil Nas X sparks bisexual rumours after claiming he misses pussy mate if if Lil Nas X could just focus on making great music instead of all this shit his life would be so so much better in general, I honestly do think so. I, I know part of the reason why he's doing it is because this is what people want nowadays, even though they're not admitting it. They kind of want the drama. They want the nonsense. But in terms of his longevity and his, his ability to kind of be able to just parlay all this fame into something else, he needs to have a few, not a few, but a couple more maybe good years to get him back on, or to, to get him in a position where he has ability to kind of segue into other things. Because from that album to that performance of Jolene, Yikes on the bike, man. But anyway, it continues. Um da, 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 believe in God. Um the New Jersey bread icon separated the person from the artist and complimented R. Kelly on being the best ever to pick up the pen and music he's ever been. He believes that he can't be taken away from him. R. Kelly is convicted. Da, 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 one second's comments were on social media. The backlash reportedly the, the yeah, people are just gonna say backlash because he didn't say anything. He didn't come out and completely condemn him which you know it's his right to do so the writing great music thing because again like i said how many people are legitimately were legitimately listening to al Kelly even before the allegations anyway i still think he was had a big appeal only to those kind of aunties that stand outside the court and shout he's innocent right those are the people are really playing r kelly don't be don't let's not make mistakes maybe a couple of features here and there but who was really bumping our kelly in the whip before you're committed anyway no one really so this suggestion that we should recognize his pen is like moot because no one even recognized the pen when he was out do you know what I mean when he was out out properly um they were just you know they just enjoyed it for what it was and just kept it moving but i don't know man. like i said i'm i'm kind of in somewhat awe of it because again he's got fuck you money so he's just coming out shooting from the hip and saying whatever the hell he wants but i'm also on the side of like is this really the hill you want to die on the r kelly redemption hill um the r kelly has um what's it called 
has been abused himself here it's like yeah we know but he's still a monster monsters are monsters it is what it is you can't um what you call it what's that word called you can't um reverse engineer all that shit or explain it away you know what i mean he still did some reprehensible things that he's obviously being punished for by the full force of the law and it just is what it is you take his lumps and bumps to keep him moving if he's denied it himself this long he's probably not going to change his mind anytime soon especially not with redemption on the flipping horizon he doesn't care about that sort of shit I mean, he's got those aunties outside the flipping courthouse shouting his name man he is lit for life <laughs> um then we kind of bounce onto this other video that I saw on the Joe Rogan subreddit, which I think is um fairly interesting in that I mentioned before, I think in general, we've really kind of haven't even got to grips or understanding how much COVID has broken our brains collectively as a society, especially in the Western world. I feel like we just could never get our heads around the idea of doing something for the collective good because we live in an individualist, individualistic society. Um, if you ever watch Hypernormalization or any other Adam Curtis documentary, you would know exactly what I'm talking about. And um, we just couldn't get ourselves in a position where we would maybe suspend suspicion and maybe just agree to disagree and just all collectively get the vaccine and just move on with our everyday lives. We couldn't do, do it, which is why all these clubs around the world or around Europe for the most part, nightclubs specifically for my interest, are slowly but surely starting to open in spits and spurts, right? You've got news about Holland opening up soon. I think I saw something about Oslo. I saw something about IB for opening up in limited hours. Like there is a, how do you say there is definitely a difference in approach based on each country and based on the temper and the people that live there. <laughs> but in general, collectively, as a Western world, we just find it hard, 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 hard to just say kumbaya, put differences to one side, let's fight this greater good. Because you'd imagine, again, off the back of all the political unrest, and especially in the States, you'd think that COVID would be a, the great unifier to bring people together. But if anything, it drove them even further apart. And um, so this clip is from, again, from the Joe Rogan podcast, where he's basically pondering why more people aren't as healthy as him, especially off the back of covid especially with the fact that so many random people are passing away unfortunately i think we had a story here in the uk about a girl that was like 15 who unfortunately passed away from covid even though she was due to get a jab on the same day like proper tragic shit um but yeah we just haven't necessarily figured out how to get our heads around it and jorogan seems to be confused as to why people aren't as committed to health and fitness as much as he is despite him having the ability to basically not care about anything else in his life outside of his family and working out and the fact that he takes all those other cocktails or drugs and shit in it so this is a part of the way i think in some respects some people's brains have been broken through covid in one way and this is maybe joe rogan's way of his head being broken by covid maybe i'm wrong but maybe i'm wrong who knows when people are sick the thing that they want more than anything is to be healthy They're like oh my god i wish i was healthy but then once they get healthy they go back to the same eating habits the same just you know just sedentary lifestyle drinking alcohol cigarettes all the same shit that got them in the, the mess in the first place and they don't change much about their nutrition they don't change much about their exercise habits when it has such a massive effect on the quality of your life the longevity of your ability to exercise like i'm 54 now and i i really haven't lost any ability to exercise rigorously to do it the same way and i've done a lot of like weird st like one of the things that i did is i completed that israeli uh protocol for hyperbaric chambers where you did um 90 days i did 60 sessions of 90 minutes over 90 days what's supposed to lengthen your telomere <laughs> i like i trying to do a humble brag about doing some israeli protocol thing that he obviously brought up because he wanted to sound cool but he didn't want to sound too cool it's like gotta love joe in it proper bro energy that's appropriate to or approximate to uh, a 20 year decrease in your biological age i did that i just did it wow just, just finished it and uh i feel great i don't know Completed what it. it did i mean i didn't really make it's funny that he's talking about this sort of stuff to a woman right like describing his fitness and workout protocol when I'd assume most women, unless they're professional athletes, couldn't give a shit. I measure my telomeres, and I probably should now, but uh, there's, def there's definitely something that happens when you do something like that. But who the fuck has time for that? Like, who's going to do that? How many people are going to be committed 
like going to some stupid place and lying in a metal chamber for 90 days. You're an outlier. That. And also, most people just don't care. And they have other stresses and worries in their life they have to kind of think about other than working out. And I guess, again, that's the benefit of having fuck you money. The benefit of having fuck you money. What it actually should be doing, again, like I said before, I think the same thing that could be argued about gays nowadays being boring. I think there's a lot of conversation I see around some of the podcasts I listen to about gay culture not being as interesting as it was in the 80s and maybe parts of the 90s when it was maybe a bit more dangerous, a bit more risque. And the fact that it's become so, I guess, um, a kind of, I won't say quite normal part of society, but in, especially in the Western world, it's, it's no one really bats an eyelid that much around the gay discourse or the queer discourse or the LGBT discourse at all as they did in the past, which is amazing, especially growing up in a very African traditional family. It's, it's cool to see, or conservative family, it's cool to see that that conversation has been broadened out a little bit more and all that good stuff. But similar to that, rich people just aren't as interesting or as exciting especially newly minted rich people as they were in the past they're just fairly boring fairly middle of the road fairly vanilla they kind of do everything in clandestine they don't really talk about the shit that they that they enjoy they don't really talk to people like you and i they kind of just hang out in their own little silos pay no taxes and do their thing so it is quite impressive to see somebody like a joe rogan using his newly found wealth which he kind of accumulated i guess you'd say um from the news radio days all the way up right which is maybe late 20s early 30s but still he wasn't bought he wasn't kind of born into a rich family it's cool to see him using that money as a way to kind of do the things that he actually enjoys right like he i think he talks about all the time about how when he you know when he started making a lot of money he'd always take his friends out to dinner right so i know everyone knows whenever joe rogan invites you to dinner he's gonna pay he's gonna tip huge you order what the fuck you want and it's just gonna be a great time in it cool amazing but most people don't do that most people get scrooge mcduck when it comes to their money and they're you know newly minted you know because they they start to kind of believe in their own sort of um what do you call it they start to believe in their own sort of narrative right that they are the i did this on my own and you could just need to pull yourself up by your bootstraps and they kind of just kind of develop contempt for people who are quote unquote beneath them which is flipping bizarre to say the least isn't it because it, that usually does happen right the more working class you are background wise or middle class and the more affluent you become later in your life the more you start to despise the very same people you, you came from or the, the very same community of people that you came from absolutely nutty behavior um but yeah i, I respect joe rogan for that respect i respect joe rogan for that aspect sorry not with that respect and I'm also a big fan of the fact that, especially when it comes to this COVID conversation, again, he's one of the only voices out there really talking about health and fitness in the way that he does. Now, again, it can be a bit annoying. It can be a bit boring. It can be a bit smooth brained. It can be a bit repetitive, right? Um, you know, Joe Rogan, is, he's got a couple of anecdotes and stories, he just keeps repeating them ad nauseum. Um, but still, it's still refreshing to see somebody say that out loud that, hey, maybe we should maybe think about you know our diets and how we work out our relationship with food whatever we need to figure something out because the amount of people that are passing away from covid especially now maybe before when we didn't have much information and we're still figuring stuff out but the fact that we've got all these alternative treatments we have vaccinations coming out of our asses we have you know i'm sure medical protocols and hospitals have improved too many things are going on that basically improve the situation that we're in and we still can't seem to figure it out right <laughs> it just i don't know man it just fills me with dread but it's also kind of interesting as well on the other side of it to think of even i can see the negative and the positive for this guy it's also funny to think of all the failed romantic relationships i've suffered from off the back of liking joe rogan and jordan peterson women really dislike this dude which i understand because most women hate gwyneth paltrow right it's the same thing so they and she's basically the female joe rogan especially with a good brand i'm surprised she hasn't been on the joe rogan experience just yet if she has a shit before i'm sure but yeah um it's the same thing i think men just recognize the over um the overly feminine energy that comes out of or borderline ppd maybe who knows that comes out of going to pause in the same way women notice the kind of hyper cis male energy that comes out of rogan's pause too right they just get the one to, to get away from them which i understand i get completely but um again respect for joe rogan for that but still he has to realize that the reason why he uh, can work out so much at his age is because legitimately he doesn't have as many life stretches as most people do have which again he's worked hard for don't get me wrong but you can't equate his ability to work out and the ability for a regular regular 54 year old guy that works in it 
and has a kid he hasn't seen in ages, a wife that despises him. I mean, it's just not the same thing. He's not going to have time to do flipping Turkish get-ups. You know what I mean, he has to legitimately go pick up his kid because he's not sure if this is going to be the last time he ever sees him because his mum threatened to move away. Do you know what I mean, like that's the realness of real people's lives. But, you know, what do I know? What do I know? Let's move on. Yeah, of course, we've got to talk about Man United. Everton, I don't really want to talk about it because it happened on Saturday, but F it, let's go. So, Man United drew 1 1 against Everton, and you know, same old questions persist over United and under the bloody um, stewardship of flipping what's his face of um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. And I don't know, I think first things first, formation and lineup wise, I didn't really have that much of an issue with it. I know Everton had a few of their first teamers out as well, two strikers in Richardson and Dominic Calvert Lewin. I forgot who other defender was out, but there was a few proper first team players. Well, obviously, Gilford Sixon's got his situation, but there was a few legit. James Rodriguez is left, right? But there was a few legit first team football players that haven't left. Already, I mentioned two Richardson and Dominic Calvert Loon. They're first team players all the time. They're always going to play up front together. And the fact that they didn't play was um, a big favour to United in terms of their ability to maybe win the game, which obviously didn't happen. Um, the lineup, I did have an issue with when it comes to United side of things. I thought everything kind of picked itself. Of course the midfield I don't want I don't want to see a you know double pivot of Fred or McTominay because I just don't think they complement each other or good enough on the ball to kind of progress the ball further the pitch Greenwood of course they have a problem with him either Marshall was was, um, was interesting um, in, what do you call it addition in there uh, what else do you have here Cavani and of course Bruno Fernandes and of course Ronaldo was on the bench some people were kicking and screaming over it but I think we should still be able to beat or to get something yeah, or to beat or to kind of late rally Everton at home. I don't think that should be that much of an issue, especially if they scored early. I mean, I don't show that issue. I don't really see it. Um, again, the ebb and flow of the game, I'd say it kind of went exactly as we expected. I thought the Martial goal was very well taken. Again, for a player that doesn't have much confidence and somebody hasn't been, um, you know, fit for a while, the fact that he was able to come onto that pass in the box and finish it so emphatically was great. He essentially just kicked it through, flipping... Jordan Pickford's hands, you know what I mean? That's how fast it was going. He couldn't stop the ball. I thought he started off pretty well. Kind of petered out a little bit towards the second half. But, you know, that's Martial for you. Like I mentioned in Sam Rose, I was talking. I think United fans want Martial to be something he's not. He's never going to be Wayne Rooney. He's never going to be running around blood and guts. Of course, mixture with skill, but that's just not his game. He's going to be more of a Dimitar Berbatov type star player for us. It's Or even for another club, it's always been his temperament. Um, so, of course, if I did have an issue with that, then, of course, second half, we kind of implode. We don't really have a clue of what we're doing. And then, of course, Andrus Towson scored a leveller. And we were lucky that he didn't score a winner when Yerimina scored. But it is what it is, isn't it? That got ruled offside. But I think overall, you have to kind of look at that game and think to yourself, especially off the back of watching Man City play Liverpool earlier today, or earlier on Sunday, sorry. There needs to be more of an honest conversation around just how far Man United are from those two teams. And if they are very far, what do people honestly think will close the gap? Because everyone that's shouting Oli out, I understand, but I don't think the manager is enough to close the gap. I think we're still going to need to fix up recruitment, maybe get a better idea of what we're going to do as a football club in terms of our vision and long-term planning when it comes to football directors. I don't think we've got the best in class. Um... There's loads of issues on board. Obviously, the training facilities, the, the flipping stadium itself. There's loads of things on board that we need to get sorted down. Until they're sorted down, I think we're still going to be far, 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 far behind. Um, another performance I want to point out that I thought was fairly terrible was Luke Shaw. He doesn't. He's not going to obviously get the kind of stick that he probably deserves, but him coming in immediately to the team for Teles, considering how well Teles played, I thought, um, in the midweek future in Champions League was a little bit disrespectful I think especially because if anything what it does show is that there is one rule for one and one rule for the other when it comes to performances and whether you get dropped or not for the next game because the way Luke Shaw played he shouldn't have played the next game Teller should have played at least the next game or maybe he got subbed off at half time or something but starting Luke Shaw ahead of Teller's knowing full well that he played better is just a bit of a bad show same goes for the McTominay and Fred double pivot everyone knows it doesn't work but he keeps persisting with it which essentially leads to more people questioning his management style because it clearly doesn't work so loads of kind of self owns happening all over the pitch um, again what can you do we drew 1-1 
Andrew Townsend did the flipping super celebration right in the corner flag. But hey, it is what it is, and it? it's a game of football, and we just keep it moving. We have to just keep it moving. Um, but again, it's just interesting to see the tide turning with with Oli, with his fans and the media. People are starting to find he maybe wiser to the fact that he might not be as good as a coach as they all thought he was, or maybe it's just not always a place for. Maybe it was somebody else up above, or maybe further up the food chain. Never saying himself above. It sounds a bit weird. And here's another article that kind of all popping up all at the same time. I think let's talk about Fabrizio Romano basically saying that allegedly. Um, the club is looking it's not looking for alternatives but if don't stone improve then definitely they're going to have that conversation which is interesting because I always got the impression and I think I was correct in that that for the most part United don't sack their managers unless they finish outside of the top four that's why Van Gaal got sacked right after winning the FA, FA Cup because they knew you won't qualify for the top four which of course poor show but that's the precedent they've set so if Oli's been able to achieve two top four finishes already this season or already in his short tenure at the club some on the inners will be like why don't you just give him an extra year why don't you give him 18 months of course I don't want that but if you're the board at the moment and you don't really have a head person to head up the football recruitment side of things that maybe you just decide next year who you want to do do you know what I mean maybe maybe but yeah this article here courtesy of the Telegraph says United players and daunting fixture list a problem stacking up for Man United an underwhelming deal sorry an underwhelming draw with Everton and then in the spicuous way to start a difficult October for all the soul shark. Look October, look over another day, looking, confused. We're gonna get these two absolute worldies to play Europa League, you know that you know what's happening in it. These two are gonna be playing the Europa League final. It's absolutely insane to think that Club and Reina is playing in the Europa League. Which again, Ronaldo probably saying he there was no other club in the world that he could have come back to that would have had him play in the Europa League. None. No even sport in Lisbon. <laughs> uh but yeah, I'm not reading all that. But you know, the 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 tide is changing, it's good to see. But for me it's a little bit too late because most fans have been saying this on Twitter for ages. I know I have on whatever feed that I have as popular and no one cared, right? No one bloody cared. Um because for some football fans, they're not proactive. They want to see our club relegated before we change a manager or before we make some changes in how we recruit or anything. That's what they want. They just want the worst case scenario, then we make a change. Well, what can you do? Next on this tier, we have news courtesy. Oh, damn, this hate for stuff is annoying, isn't it? God damn it. Yeah, next on the tier we have a news courtesy of BBC. Recognized gels for important 28 kilograms of cannabis. So some bit of sweet news, of course, because I'm a big fan of nines, but also a decent resolution, all things considered. I think a lot of people had kind of hypothesized that he probably had a bit of a plea deal um, because he didn't get convicted for all the other harder drugs that he was allegedly importing. But I think this deal worked out pretty well for him. Again, all things considered. I said British rapper Nines has been jailed for importing 28 kilograms of cannabis into the UK from Spain and Poland. The chart topping musician, real name Courtney Frecknell, oh sorry, Freckleton, 31, and Jason Thompson, 35, were both given 28 month sentences, so basically two years. The pair had previously pleaded guilty to drugs and money laundering charges, sentencing them both for the Harrow Crown Court. He said, What a waste of that, that talent to be sat in to be sat in one more scrubs is true. That's something that he's not going to be able to lose. And to think that he was one of our more popular... Because I'd like to know exactly what drove him to do something like that. Maybe it's just a clout. And just because he's, you know, he's kind of, you know, he is where he's from. So maybe that was a reason why he did it. Or maybe because he generally needed money. Which, if that's the case, he generally needed money. He was chef of cash. Um, musician with boiler. Okay, boilers, yeah. Um, maybe if he was actually strapped for cash, it'd be great to know so that we can have an honest conversation around... Again, whether it changes anything is unlikely, but it will be cool to have an honest conversation about, you know, the music industry, how predatory it is, and the fact that our, one of our biggest chart-topping flipping rappers who's flipping, you know, doing whatever he needs to be done <sighs> in order to kind of put food in his table and to make sure his family has a roof over their head. I mean, it's flipping diabolical, really. Again, I'm not too sure what the reasons are. Maybe you might just be just pure, you know, greed and him wanting to have more than what he's already have. I, I don't know. Who cares? But um, I think two years, all things considered, 28 grand plus all the other stuff that was found is like a pretty sweet deal. Um, it, says it continues. Last year, Nines topped the UK album chart with his record, Clubs in the Bucket. Still snack that now. He says they named the hip-hop best hip-hop artists at the Mobile Hip-Hop Awards. Um, the court... 
heard that the pair had been involved in one successful bid to import the class B drug one while another attempt had been also made uh, prosecutor Genevieve Reeves said the money laundering charges related to 98 98,000 debt 98,000 sorry debt the value of the drugs and the rise of Bitcoin to buy the cannabis some of the cannabis was imported through boilers through the through into the UK from the parents had caught had heard um, nines of Barbican, Central London, and Thompson of Barnet, North London, were arrested in June after police raided across London and Bournemouth in Hertfordshire. The operations are understood to stem from the infiltration of EncroChat. Yep, big up, let's work. Those who know know, but yeah, EncroChat got taken down, and most of the uh, big sellers also got compromised, which probably led to nines unfortunately getting himself nabbed. He probably did a lot more business on there prior, I'd assume, allegedly, but yeah, 12 months. No content. No, well, no, talk about. So I say no content. Trisha, this is not Trisha. This is rapper nine. So I say, what was I thinking about Trisha there for no reason? But yeah, bang your doors, rap, bang your doors, rapper nine, bang your door nines. Um, soon come home. Um, twenty eight months, considering the amount you are allegedly transporting over the borders, isn't that much really. So yeah, keep your head up. Keep your head up. Oh mate. It's safe if you're scratching your throat, it's just horrible. I should take another tablet, but I don't because I'm getting drowsy. So I don't want to take another tablet just in case it kind of makes you go. You know what I mean? Um, let's talk about this. So my, how much time have I got left here? Sorry, but I just want to check the time, make sure I'm not going too over. Okay. So this is courtesy of BBC News. It says Sarah Avrad murder. Yeah. So I think most of you are aware there was a story that happened a few months ago, unfortunately, of this young lady called Sarah Everard who went missing and unfortunately her body was then found later on, had been murdered. She was just going came back, I think, from a run with her friend or something crazy, like, like a male friend. Imagine even that's even worse. Imagine how he feels. Um knowing that he literally left her to walk home just the last distance I think it was less than five minutes and then within that time a police officer posing or a police officer posing as a COVID agent or something had um, pulled thingy over and arrested her for not for being out past curfew which is utterly insane but we move in it and the discourse around it has been very interesting to hear f women around the world um, share their experience um, you know, with violent men or men with kind of secretary motives online and shit. And again, it's been opening for me because I don't normally hear those sort of stories and I don't, or maybe just don't pay attention. But I remember once being in a house party and for some, whatever reason, again, my house parties are weird, right? But whatever house party I went to, it went around a conversation about, you know, if any of the girls that had been assaulted or anything. And what surprised me, someone brought up a girl there, is that she said something like, oh, I've never actually legitimately ordered Uber Eats or whatever delivery service to my house before when I'm on my own. So it's always been kind of with friends or like a gathering or whatever, but she's never felt peckish one day and decided, you know what, let me get a double cheeseburger. That's just never happened in her life. And mostly because of her safety. She doesn't want to have a guy on his own turn up to her place, figure out that she's by herself, give her food. You know, all those school things it's like, Jesus, man, you never actually think of that, innit? It's not something that ever kind of comes into your mind. You just always assume that, I don't know, people just do whatever the fuck they want. But, you know, if you're a young girl, especially if you're slight in build, you have to kind of really be, you know, attentive of where you are, where you're going, who you're seeing, blah, 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 so you don't send the wrong signals. And unfortunately, the Sarah Averett murder was one of the horrible ones because even though the discourse around, you know, sexual assault and all that stuff was fairly interesting to hear people talk about, there was one part of it that I just didn't think was legit that sounded a bit balmy people are like oh men should only be allowed at a certain time they should be walking this amount of distance to you every bit of communication should be done by hand like some really nutty stuff that i was going of course but the details of sarah ever murder sarah ever i swear murder just paints a different light basically she was unlucky the guy was a complete sicko for whatever reason he managed to pass a drug and a police test at the police academy and if anything sarah ever was well within her rights to feel as if she was comfortable in the hands of a white police officer right especially in the middle of where, where she was from or whatever place that it was that she unfortunately got um nabbed right you would assume that she'd be safe there but she wasn't something still terribly bad happened so this idea of curfew men and making sure that that is the thing that can stop guys especially nasty guys from doing such a thing is just way off base 
the issue is far larger than that in general. Again, how did the guy get a fucking job with the police, um, knowing how extensive his police record is, especially when you consider that it only took journalists a couple of, you know, I'd assume days to figure out what he actually was about, this guy that allegedly attacked them, Sir Everett. So he continues, it says here, Met Police Officer Wayne Cousins abducted her as she walked home from a friend's house in Clapham in 3rd of March. Cousins showed his warrant before re-arresting, sorry, ret restraining Miss Everett, putting her in his high car and driving away. His sentencing hearing, Old Bailey was told that her audio could have been summarised as a deception, kidnap, rape, strangulation and fire, which is kind of the classic MO for like a serial killer, you know, pervert -y kind of dude, right? If you ever watch those kind of um, serial killer documentaries, you know that's sort of like their MO when it comes to um, kind of upping the ante with the quote-unquote people that they're going out to abduct and whatnot. And like I said, man, this is in Clapham, right? A fairly affluent area. Um, I'm assuming there were stories of people getting arrested on the street by a police officer, police officer outside of the curfew, so maybe that's why she was hesitant or reluctant to run or just ignore the guy because i guess it does happen and again he's he's in power like i don't there's no reason why she shouldn't have doubted the guy but unfortunately she probably should have kind of listened to that little you know feeling in the pits of her stomach and did something else but it's too late now man so yeah r.i.p to her it says here the 48 year old had worked on covid patrols in january the court had heard and so he had known he had known all the appropriate formal terms regarding potential breaches see um the whole kidnapping took less than five minutes jesus christ miss everett was handcuffed at 19 so at 9 34 p.m and four minutes later she was being driven to dover where cousins transferred her to his own car cousins then drove a remote rural area to new well where he read miss everett the sexual predator had clocked off from a 12-hour shift that morning like going to work in the morning then going to abduct and rape somebody in the evening truly some sick shit and again maybe it does put to it does maybe put to bed this whole idea around uh bad apples in police forces around the world because this is quite common maybe people would say it's quite common because they're men but i would say it's quite common in general because of people that attract to the sort of things i don't think all men go around thinking of stuff like this especially sick shit like this because I still think in terms of the proportion and the population, just numbers, there's just there's not enough of these things happening in general to suggest that it's a rampant issue amongst all men. There's obviously some sickos that exist out there, monsters, and unfortunately, monsters and sickos have infiltrated parts of our society that we thought were safe. Parts of society we thought, you know, no, if you'd get somebody from that scene or that kind of workspace or whatever, or that kind of occupation, more likely, it's very unlikely that they're going to turn into one of these sort of guys, you know what I mean? But it did happen. It continues their prosecution, Tom Little QT says, Cousins must have taken Miss Everett's phone, mobile phone number from her and removed her SIM card, which he tried to destroy. Miss Everett was described by a former long-term boyfriend as extremely intelligent, savvy and streetwise, and not a gullible person, the court heard. He could not envision her getting into the car with somebody he didn't know unless by force of manipulation. Of course, that's what a lot of people said, remember. A lot of people were saying this at the beginning, um, that there's no way that she would have just got in um, to some stranger's car like she wasn't dumb right she wasn't like some bimbo or some person that didn't know you know again in london it doesn't matter if you live in clapham or you live in Croydon or you live in parts of hackney you if you're not street smart you have to figure it out fairly quickly so i'm pretty sure her living there you know you figure out quite quickly who's 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 got bad intention who doesn't how to spot danger how to move away i mean you spot it really quickly if you don't then you're probably going to go back and live with your parents in it but um yeah a lot of people were saying this and i think they've been vindicated now because you know it's come out that she was essentially um under that she was essentially deceived into believing that she was being arrested by a legit covid patrol officer um, she continues here, it says he could not envision her getting to the, the, the abduction was witnessed by a couple traveling past in the car, but they assume Miss Everett must have done something wrong. Jesus Christ. Um, one of the witnesses described the woman on the pavement who appeared to have left her arm behind her back and was in the process of giving her arm behind the other back and a man in dark clothing handcuffed her. Miss Little said that they believed that they were witnessing an undercover police officer arresting a woman. The exact time Miss Everett was killed could not be determined, although she dead, although she was dead, strangled with Cousins' police belt. Oh my God, man. Uh, I about... 2.30 a.m. when she stopped for snacks at service station when he saw sorry, at service station he then visited again is that like a form of like um control or whatever or like kind of exhibition to stop at a petrol station a very public one because they always have CCTV buy something like a snack 
and then hang about and then jump back into your car. That must be, right? It must be like a form of like showing that you are in control, that you know what you're doing, that you're a sick shit because God almighty. Um, he then visited, uh, visited Hodes Road, sorry, Hood, Hodes Wood near Ashford, Kent, leaving just before sunrise. Later that morning, he threw Mrs. Everett's mobile phone into a canal at the sandwich where it was found by a police diver. Wow, they even found a the phone. They found everything. For a police officer, he's really bad at disposing of a body, by the way, and kind of concealing his crime, right? He's really, really bad at it. So um, I think we have to thank whoever is up above for his flipping, you know, dumbness. Wayne Cousins shuffled into court. This head bowed, wearing a dark blue suit, and he confirmed his name. Sarah's parents and other family members are in court listening to their own details about their daughter rape and murder in the public gallery. Many of their friends have also come to court to support them. Three members of the family will lead out statements this afternoon about her, how her mother has affected them. The prosecutor said that the murder was reported on social media as a she was only walking home, but the more apparent Appropriate five words to describe cousins were deception, kidnap, rape, strangulation, and fire. Yeah, 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 man. Again, I, I'm sure people's kind of understanding or, you know, idea of what happened and how they interpret it isn't going to change now. They've known the kind of facts of the matter. I don't think so. I think this is such a visceral thing on social and then seeing all the images and videos of police officers flipping, ripping women off from the vigil where they were kind of honoring her life and whatever it may be with a candle individual, silent, no violent protest whatsoever, just standing there collectively, um, remembering, you know, her and trying to, you know, send a message to see police officers ripping them all from that vigil, you know, like, ugh. and then it coming out, it was a police officer that did it, it was just fucking, sometimes you think to yourself, like, these police officers don't give themselves any favours, it? It, it? they have no idea what bad PR means, they have no idea how they could look by doing certain things, they just do it, right? It's just funny, isn't it, how police officers, are, police officers are just as impulsive as the people they kind of go and are enlisted to go and kind of chase around, isn't it, right? Super, super impulsive. It's just, it just doesn't make any sense. But yeah, R.I.P. Sir Everett. Um, yeah, tragic, tragic case. And again, another reminder that unfortunately we do live and run beasts and monsters in our society and no amount of, you know, curfewing people or neutering men or cucking them or, you know... Uh, telling them to share their feelings is going to change that there are just some people that are just wrong and it just is what it is and unfortunately obviously you know we'll probably get to a point where you're just not admitting people into the police force who have his questionable parts because i think there was history of him exposing himself to these sort of things to other people and you would imagine doing something like that would automatically mean you can't go into the police force in the same way that having a police record um, in any way, shape, or form, even if you check the flipping Mars bar, would should sh would and should affect your ability to be able to be a peace officer. It just is what it is. It's unfair. It's not the right thing to do. And everyone should get a chance to be a cop. But if you've done something that goes against the entire code of being a police officer in, in your youth, people are allowed to kind of have reservation about whether or not you could be trustworthy this time in the future. You'd imagine it. You'd imagine. You would imagine. Next on the list, what else we got here? Yeah, let's talk about this one. This is a bit of a mad one. We have this story, courtesy of the Mirror, where Emily Ratajkowski, um, the very boxsome video vixen who's now turned into what do you call her? She obviously a mother. Is she a wife now? I'm not too sure, but she's turning herself into a bit of an intellectual in that regard. She's got a book coming out. She speaks about the book she reads in general and just kind of is trying to present herself as a more, more than a kind of woman with a great set you know and whatever it may be she's trying to present herself to be more than just that which is you know admirable to say the least because people don't give people that credit enough when they do do it and they always complain all oh, you're only doing is using your sex appeal and it's like yeah of course why wouldn't you if you were built like emily radikowski or not wouldn't you want to use whatever god given um gifts you were given to kind of get ahead in life it's natural of course you want to do it in the same way if you were able to jump and you know and dunk a ball you should probably take advantage of that and go go into the nba and flipping cash out and it? it's just what it is but this story i'm not really a fan of so this is here emily radikowski says robin's robin thick groped her naked breast on a blunt lined set um so she's coming out with her quote-unquote me too story um again to promote her book which is understandable too mom doing your thing you need to promote and get the attention on it but i just think in terms of it especially in terms of Robin Thicke and what happened since the bloodline things, 
if anyone's had suffered <laughs> a lot, it's definitely Robin Fig, if I'm not mistaken. Did his wife leave him off the back of this? He went through that embarrassing Miley Cyrus thing. Um, you know, he got sued to high heaven, him and Pharrell for the bloodline, so flipping sample, whatever it would be for the Marvin Gaye estate. They don't fuck around when it comes to honoring Marvin Gaye. Um, so yeah, lost that. Um, wife that obviously did what what else happened to him was it another sexual assault thing? anyway he's he lost a lot of things in general so for this to come out now out of the blue it just feels a little bit opportunistic it was a little bit lame it feels a little bit meh it doesn't do nothing really because you know for the most part it feels like robin fick's career hasn't ever recovered from this anyway so it's just weird that she'd pick this time to say something and also I would go as far as saying that why didn't she just jump on board and everyone was dogpiling on him in the first place when he first got cancelled. I don't think that would have made things any worse for her career-wise. I'm pretty sure she would have been okay. If anything, it would have maybe given her a little bit of a bump. People that might be want to reach out and say, oh, Emily, you know, what happened? Da -da -da, and then, re you know, repeat another picture of herself on the Daily Mail website, all those kind of things. So, I don't know. I just think it's a little bit lame. But let's read the article. It says Emily uh, Ratajkowski says Robin Fick groped her bare breast in a bloodlines video set in the sex assault witnessed by his director who screamed, "What the fuck are you doing?" Of course, of course, we're not surprised that a singer like Robin Thick would be, you know, getting a bit handsy with the video model at a video shoot because you know he probably gets away with murder when it's not Emily Ratajkowski, so he probably thought she was game. Oh, she clearly wasn't. Like, but ugh, what can you do? The model who is topless with others in the topless <laughs> in a topless in the second cut um, of the video with fake Pharrell and T.I. said a 44 year single was behaving perfectly until he came back to the set drunk. Now, don't get me wrong. No one's condoning being drunk as a reason to shut someone's boobs. But there definitely is context behind this, right? He definitely wouldn't have done that if he wasn't drunk. He'd have the Dutch courage in him. Um, and the video shoot was a bit silly right it was a little bit pokey funny they were in a chicken shop you know someone was impressed with something before like we're just mucking around so maybe it is within reason um if that's the case to suggest that that kind of playful attitude could get a bit too far and it led to him doing that now she's saying it was just because he was drunk he specifically was a reason he was a problem she didn't name anybody else she said the director called him out she called him out so maybe this is just in terms of like his punishment coming forward but you know especially well, his punishment now she's come forward again um the model da, 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 according to the times in her new book my body which is out to release next month suddenly i've nowhere i felt the coolness forgive foreignness i love how you would describe stuff like this suddenly i've nowhere i felt the coolness when i say cold is it cool so, let's do it again suddenly out of nowhere i felt the coolness the foreignness of a stranger's hands cupping my bare breast from behind i instinctively moved away looking back at robin fick uh, Jakowski got onto a ledge he smiled a goofy grin stumbled backwards his eyes concealed behind his glasses he had my head turned to the darkness beyond the set oh uh, i don't know man i'm not too sure how much i like this sort of like i was a what you call it i was a model who basically used my body to get ahead which is great because why wouldn't you and now because she's i guess somewhat ashamed of that past i would assume maybe you're trying to pivot it away and kind of speak as if you know you were hoodwinked and you didn't really want to do this didn't want to do that it's like no you didn't you, you did at that time you did and yeah you can still regret it but maybe just regret it in private innit? i don't know or write the guy a letter or something. I don't know. I just it just seems a bit lame to me in that regard. Um, again, like I said, he's lost everything anyway. Robin Figgis not this is nothing. I'm not gonna do much to his career really. It's already in the gutter. Um, can anyone name me the last Robin Fig record they heard? That's new. I I don't. I've seen his dad performing places doing his thing, but him is just. What can you do? Um, the director. Diane Martel confirmed to the time she witnessed the incident and screamed, what the fuck are you doing? Who then became sheepish. She added that the believed Fick had behaved in that manner as he was drunk. The supermodel says she didn't speak out, but felt that the, the, felt the humiliation pump through my body. But as she wants to speak out now, as she's processed the event. <sighs> I don't know about that, man. Does it take you that long to... Again, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if, the, if, that's, even, if that's even a legit point to even make. I don't see what that does processing the event again like i said he was dog powered on career cancelled wife left him record records are in the bin i don't think he even was able to perform in front of the crowds that he was performing in the past 
it just seems odd but you know on the other side of it too you just have to respect the flagrancy of it, it she's from hollywood in the entertainment industry they only look after number one which is her is the only person that's most important only to her is basically her children or the one kid that she does have at the moment and maybe her, her partner so whatever she has to do to make sure she keeps wearing expensive clothes going to great parties and just doing the damn thing she'll do it which i completely get to i love the kind of upfrontness about it but this idea that you didn't know what you were getting yourself into by going on a set like that, knowing full well, they probably gave her a speck of what she was expected to do and stuff like, and you know, I don't know. It's just a bit strange. It's just a bit strange. Even if it is kind of boyish behavior, I just think in that moment, especially the fact that he got canceled already, just pile on top of him anyway, more accusations on top, have your day in the sun, enjoy it and duck. But I think this was kind of, you know, a little bit opportunistic, but hey, what can you do? What can you do? Um, what else do we have to talk about? I think that might be it, you know. Yeah, that might be it. Let's end it right there. The excellent thing show episode number oh no, there we go, let's put this back again. Oops. I did that wrong there. Um the excellent thing show episode number um five zero two. Thanks so much for tuning in. It's been a pleasure to have your company. I really, really enjoyed it. As you can tell, if it's your first time, check out the show. Please make sure you like and subscribe and share and all that good stuff. That'd be greatly appreciated. And of course, for listening via the podcast app, please leave me a five star review and share the show with your friends. And I'll be back with you guys again very, very soon. But until then, take care, be safe. It was great to speak, it was great to hang, and I'll see you guys again very soon. Peace.